Thanksgiving for another day he's given us. Uh, I want to praise him and honor him and thank God for just taking care of us every day. Are you blessed today? Amen. It is great uh, to know that we uh, serve a risen Savior who knows exactly uh, where we are this morning and what we need, and we give him thanksgiving and praise. Uh, thank you so much for joining in uh, this morning. If you're joining live or if you are uh, in our parking lot or right here in the sanctuary, wherever you are, uh, we're so thankful to have the opportunity and the privilege to worship uh, the Lord together. And We want to give God thanksgiving for that opportunity he has given us on this side of eternity uh, to give him praise again and to honor his wonderful name. Also, uh, if you are uh, this your very first time here at Poovey's Chapel, we want to say thank you and welcome. Uh, and we also have a special gift for you right after service at our Welcome Center and our, in our uh, foyer. So please uh, take time to go by there. And we want to say thank you again for being here this morning. Uh, we're here to worship the Lord. Amen. Uh, and uh, give Him praise. And the Bible says, uh, let us come before Him uh, with thanksgiving. And this morning, I'm glad we can come to praise, honor, and lift up uh, the wonderful name of the Lord. Uh, just a, a couple of quick announcements. One uh, is we are doing a food drive uh, uh, for our Baptist children's home. Uh, and uh, next week, uh, we're to bring uh, brownie mix, cake mix, cookie mix, uh, muffin mix, uh, bisquick mix, and icing. So just mix it up all week. Amen. All right. Uh, and uh, bring that in. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Are y'all here? I need everybody to lift your hand up one time like this right here. All right, now lift your other hand up. Now, praise the Lord. Let's worship him. Amen. We're here, amen. Uh, give God thanksgiving for the opportunity to know him and to trust uh, in the Lord. Uh, so we want to bless our children, our Baptist children's home. Uh, so please remember that. And also our food pantry. Uh, encourage people to come to that. We have a, a great opportunity to bless others. Uh, and that is next Saturday beginning at 10 a.m. in the uh, parking lot. Uh, so thank God for that opportunity. And guess what? It is time for Vacation Bible School, amen. Uh, and what a privilege that is. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do in Vacation Bible School. Uh, so we need helpers. We need volunteers. Uh, if you would like to uh, help with that, if you'll please uh, sign up outside, you'll be able to sign up uh, at our, uh, our resource center outside. So please uh, do that right after service, uh, and we'll, we'll get you everything that you need uh, to be, be part of that great uh, experience. Also today, if God is speaking to you about uh, becoming a member or you're interested uh, being a member here at Poovey's Chapel, we're going to have a class right after service uh, in our office building. So please uh, make your way there. Uh, and then a baptism class next uh, Sunday after service. If you have been uh, saved and God has changed your life, uh, your next step is to be baptized. And so uh, we're having a baptism class. And then on May the 2nd, uh, we're having a baptism. So we're, we're looking forward to celebrating with those who have trusted the Lord. Uh, the greatest thing in this world is trust in Jesus. Amen. And we celebrate together. Uh, give him praise uh, uh, for what he has done in our hearts and lives. So please remember that. Also, on on May the 2nd, uh, our youth and uh, I know our seekers class and maybe some others, uh, if you have a uh, class that has been meeting together, they're going to meet at 9 a.m. Uh, before our service on May the 2nd. So uh, if you have a Sunday school class or Bible study class uh, that would like to meet, uh, begin meeting, please do so. Uh, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do uh, through that. So let's all stand together this morning as we want to give God praise for all that God is doing, has done, and God is going to do. Amen. Y'all do know that God is alive and well, right? Jesus arose uh, from the grave and today he is victorious and therefore the Bible says in the book of Corinthians uh, that, that he has given us uh, the victory this morning. So I want you to look at somebody this morning and say you are victorious, amen? You have the victory, hallelujah, and we want to give God praise as we, as we worship him in prayer. As we pray this morning uh, and uh, give God thanksgiving, uh, let's, let's pray for Patricia Hawkins who is uh, in the hospital. Also, uh, J.T. Eisenhower's daughter, continue to pray uh, for her. Uh, what a miracle God has done in her life. How many of you know God does miracles? Would you say amen? And then uh, pray for Aline Haas uh, and also Jerry Dula and uh, Jerry Setzer. I remember Hazel Palmer in prayer as she uh, continues to recover from her surgery. Uh, I remember Brother Jeff Day in prayer uh, as he uh, has pneumonia. So remember Brother Jeff in prayer. And then remember Brother Bud. Uh, he'll be going to preach this morning at uh, Clearview Baptist Church. So please I remember Brother Bud as he goes to preach. Uh, we're thankful for what God is doing this morning. We have the opportunity uh, to celebrate. How many of you have something special in your life to 
today uh, that you're looking for God to answer. Would you just slip your hand up this morning? Amen. Uh, we're trusting God uh, to do great things, and I'm glad we can do that together. The Bible says uh, that if, if we'll come together and agree on earth as touching any one thing, that he shall do it. Amen. How many believe today that prayer request that you have that God's able? Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. Let's trust him together and uh, give God thanksgiving this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we want to praise you for another day that you give us. God, to come together on this side of eternity to worship, to honor, uh, to lift up your name. God, if we were in glory and we was already in heaven, Lord, how wonderful and glorious uh, it would be. But Lord, I want to thank you that you have allowed us uh, this temporary opportunity while we're on this earth uh, to worship, to praise you, to glorify you. Uh, God, to be able to share one another's burdens, to pray uh, for our neighbors and friends and God to be able to pray together how God that your will be done in and through our lives Heavenly Father you know every single need how God is represented by the hands that has been raised or there may be some this morning God that have someone in their life how Lord that has has an addiction God that they're praying how for to be broken God I pray in the name of Jesus Lord for those how we lifted our hands God that have people in our life our friends our family how those around us that have never trusted you as Savior and Lord God may you help them may you open their eyes or may they come uh, to know you as Savior and Lord. God, I pray for these sickness, Lord, that, that may have been lifted up before you. God, we just come, Lord, asking you, uh, Lord, to rescue. And God, that you would be that great physician uh, that would minister healing in this hour. Father, we pray, God, for uh, Pat Hawkins in, in the hospital. God, that you would just lift her up. Lord, I pray, God, for Aileen Hass and uh, Jerry Dula. Lord, we pray for Jerry Setzer uh, this morning. God, we pray for Hazel. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Jeff. Lord, you just bless him. And God, all these, uh, Lord, this morning, God, I'm so glad. How you're the God who is able. Lord, we pray for Brother Bud as he goes to a priest this morning at Clearview. God, you would anoint him. God, I pray for your power, God, to be upon him. God, and fill his life with your presence and your power. God, I pray for an anointing to be upon him. Lord, you know, how God, today exactly what we need. Lord, we're here, God, before you. Lord, we don't have anything, God, to offer except for ourselves. Lord, we don't have anything to give but our sinfulness. Lord, we don't have any righteousness in ourselves, Lord, but what you have given us. And God, for that, we want to praise you. We want to honor you, God. Lord, we're here today, Lord, to ask you, Lord, just to speak your word into our life, God. Lord, we need you more than we need breath. God, we need you more than we need lights on. God, we need you more than we need food on the table, Lord. God, we need you, God, to breathe upon our lives this morning. Oh, God, in healing and in strength, God, in salvation, Lord, you know every single need. God, we're here today to say yes to you. Lord, speak to us. God, we just pour out our life, God, before you this morning. God, we want to say yes to you, to your will, to your way, to your desires, God. Lord, we're here to say yes. Father, I want to thank you that you loved us so much that you came. You bled and died on a cross for our sins. Lord, thank you that you was buried. But Lord, this morning we rejoice and we worship that you arose on that third day. And God, today we live in your victory. We live in your resurrection power. And God, we just ask your will to be done. God, we give you thanksgiving and praise for all your blessings. May your will be done, God, in this place as we receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. I'm glad today to know that we serve a Savior who is alive and lit. well. Let's worship him. Hallelujah.
worship him this morning. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Solid ground is falling down from underneath my feet. Between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. And when I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and my family, I can hear the rain reminding me in the eye of storm.
Amen. How many of you believe he's alive today? Amen. Amen. How many he's alive in you? Would you say amen? amen? Oh, praise his wonderful name this morning. I'm glad to know that God is alive. He is well. Uh, and He is on the throne and he has given us the opportunity uh, to be able to know him and trust him and to know that he is alive. He is well. I bless the good name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, how many of you is glad that he took your place one day? Uh, on the cross of Calvary where he shed his blood so that all of us, every single person in the world can come to know him. Did you know there's room in heaven for everybody? And uh, well, I praise him that we can trust in him this morning. Uh, give God praise for his wonderful blessings in our life. I want you to take your Bibles and go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter number 2. Uh, as you do, if you are uh, following along on the app, all of our notes are there and some of the scriptures are there. Uh, but I want you to be sure and keep your Bible open. And we're going to be uh, looking at something that affects every single person in this building, everyone in the parking lot. Every person you know is affected uh, by what we're going to look at uh, this morning in the Word of God. And I want to ask you to do yourself a favor, and that is this. Simply pray, God, speak to me. Lord, I need you. I need to hear from you this morning. What are you saying in my life? From every, every child, every teenager, uh, every young adult, every, uh, every middle age, whatever that is. I have no idea what middle age is, do y'all? Senior adult, they, start, they said senior adult starts at 55 at Poovey's Chapel. Praise the Lord, you can get a discount on coffee. Amen. But God is good. How many believe today that God wants to do something in your life? I want you to look with me in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 19. While we look this morning at the word we're reminded that our world is totally spinning in chaotic confusion. While we're looking at the word this morning, we're celebrating who Jesus is in this place because he is wonderful. Would you say amen right there? Our world is like a, you ever watch the, whenever you see the, wor, the water swirling around going down into a hole and you're watching it going down faster and faster and faster? That is what is happening to our world. Say, Pastor, what in the world is going to happen? What is going to be the outcome? It is very, very simple. Everything that is happening in our world today is bringing us about to tie us together to become a one world society. We're watching it happen before our eyes. You say, that scares me to death. I want to tell you, number one, it should Number two, you say, what is our response to that? It is to be faithful to the word of God, be faithful to the walk of God, be faithful in the area of trusting God, because I want to tell you something. He said, he's never, we have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Can I let you in on a little something? It's time how to get with God and let God be God in our life and let him be the Lord of everything in our life. Just like Brother Dan said just a minute ago, how the Lord to stand up and praise him. He took our place, give him our all, uh, put down the lesser and get the greater. He's the greater, amen. I want you to look in Ephesians 2 and verse number 19. The Bible says, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. He said, I want to let you know before you were, when you were a sinner, when you're away from God, you're a stranger uh, to the things of God. Then the Bible says in verse number 19, he said, but fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. You know what it's all about? It's all about Jesus. Amen. He said, you are walking in Jesus, you are living in Jesus, you are, you are breathing in Jesus, you are surviving in Jesus, you are thriving in Jesus. It is in him. Then look with me as we go on down to verse number 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God. Who is supposed to, who are we building a habitation for? 
God. He is living to be living in us and through us. And he said you do it through the Spirit is the power of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the foundation, and we've been talking about how the foundation for how just a little while. What is uh, Jesus said, I want to give you a little example. He tells us this, and I want to remind us of this almost every single time. Jesus said, if you build your house upon the rock, the storms are going to come, and it is going to stand. He said, if you build it up on the sand, the storms are going to come. And it's going to do what? It's going to fall. It's going to be destroyed. And so uh, this morning as we look at our life and look where we are, we understand something about a foundation. It may be unseen. Uh, The foundation of a building may be underground. But it is the most valuable part of the structure. When I look around over this past year, I say, "Woo!" how about y'all? When I look at this whole past year, I'm thinking, wow, what is taking place? But I want to give you a, a little insight from the Word. Over this past year, we've also uh, been, been witnessing where people's foundation are. When you and I have a foundation of God, I want to tell you, yes, there may be scary times. Yes, there may be times how that we are fearful. Yes, how there's times we doubt and we wonder what is going on. But I want to tell you something about someone who is walking in Jesus Christ and has the foundation of God. We always go back to standing on the Word. Aren't you glad for the Word? Amen. And so we're watching God as he is teaching us about a foundation. A foundation means it is put down. It is the substructure. It is what's holding up the structure that is happening. It it, it means to commit, to conceive is a place of beginning in our life. And so the word, the place meaning of the word is it is an active position. It is always doing its job. I want to tell you something about Jesus. Did y'all know they put him on a cross? Did you know that Jesus died on a cross our foundation the bible says that jesus christ himself is the chief cornerstone but yet he dies on a cross but can i just let you in on something y'all ready he died physically but he never died can you look at the person beside of you i want you to understand something this morning look at them right quick they are never going to die their body may drop out of this world. It could happen while we're sitting in this sanctuary. But I want to tell you, we're never going to die. You're going to spend eternity in heaven or in hell. Jesus, his body dies on the cross. And the Bible said they placed his body in the grave. This morning as I looked at this graveyard, whenever I pulled up, I thought, wow. Man, look, all those, everything they did was temporary in this world. And now they are in the place of either eternal rewards or eternal regret. Because it's heaven or hell. I want to remind you something about our foundation. He did not stay dead. He arose on the third day. And this morning in 2021, Jesus is as alive and well as he has ever been. He is eternal as we've looked at already in the foundation. And so this morning, we're going to take our Bibles. We're going to go all the way back to the very first book of the Bible, which is what? Genesis, I want you to go to Genesis chapter number 1. I want you to go there with me. Genesis chapter number 1. We're going to look at man, oh man. Somebody say man, oh man. I want you to look with me in Genesis 1. And we're going to look in verse number 27 and see how, what happens as we look at, at, at man, at our, who we are, what we are, what makes up who we are. Where is, where is all this supposed to be going in life? I want you to look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 27. The Bible says, so God, who did it? God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Who created us? God. The Bible says and begins to teach us about who man is. I want you to look at some things, and we're going to see in Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 26 down through verse number 28 that we are created. Everybody say created. 
We are created by God. So if you are created, you have to have a what? A creator. Someone had to do it. We're going to look and see about, our, about being created. I want to ask you a question. This is a very simple uh, question, but I want you to uh, put it in your heart and in your mind. How did we really get here? There's two ways. We were either created or we evolved. When you look at our world today, I want to tell you that you are not looking at a world who believes we were created. Over time, as we studied just a few weeks ago, uh, here in uh, whenever we uh, learned about creation, how we understand something that over time we have been indoctrinated to the point of believing that we have evolved. That's what I think about it. When you think about a being evolved or being created, I want to ask you something. We talk about being evolved. Our world sells us on the, the theory of evolution. Our world is selling us today how that you have, how that we have been, how we are, we are in that place of, of, of becoming involved and or evolved and we continue to evolve. I don't know about y'all, but I'm dissolving. Do you not think that over the billions of time that they now say that we have been evolved, that somewhere we would quit losing our teeth? That your hair would stop turning gray or loose? Do you not think somewhere in time that your fingernails would grow uh, to the right length and you would never have to have them clipped? You say, you're crazy. That is what they say. They said that somewhere you evolved and a bird's beak finally got to the place that it was the perfect size. You think about evolution, it, it, we should continue to be evolving rather than going in the opposite direction. Darwin now offered, never offered a real explanation of the origin of anything. He never told how that there was a matter that came into being. He just said there was matter and then it began to grow. You was pond scum and then you grew a tail, then you grew legs and you hopped up on. I believe he was watching frogs. He began to give us, you say, preacher, I want to tell y'all something. If we do not stand up in this world and get back to truth about where God has given us, we are going to continue to go to a sliding a downward spiral toward hell in everything that we have and do. He came up, and here's what he said. He merely offered a theory of evolution of species. He never explained how, where anything began or it came from, just that it mutated from matter. You say, what is mutation? Anybody in here ever had old food in your refrigerator? And you went uh, to open the lid... Let's say some sour cream. Anybody here ever have sour cream in your refrigerator before? Raise your hand. Man, you opened that lid thinking it was good, and it was not. How many of you have ever done that before? Did, did you scrape the hair off that and eat it anyway? Just wondering. You know what is happening? It had to have something to begin to grow. You got to start somewhere. And I'm amazed that our world has bought in. I tell you, you, did not have, you do not have to really tell where it came from. It just had to come. I mean, we're, we're, we even have Christians that have the idea how that, well, maybe there is the theory of evolution along with creation that how God how gave this little matter and then it began to evolve. I just want to let you know something. That is not the word of God. God did it in seven days Period. The creation was in six, and you say, well, it may have been six uh, according to year, uh, thousands of years. I just want to let you know something. My God can make a big tree when he says created. Amen. 
When you look at creation, our world needs to understand in order for us to be in that place, in order for us to vacate the idea that we have a creator, how the worldly system must bring theories into play. Just might have happened. I want to tell you, friend, there's a creator. You have been created. You say, how do you know that? I have the word of God. I have seen it happen. We have a God who creates. David said it like this, that God himself put his hands on me in my mother's womb. And he created me in my mother's womb. I want you to look this morning. And I want, us, I want us to see that we are created. First of all, I want you to look in verse number 26 with me, if you will. The Bible said we're created in the image of God. Now, I want you to look at somebody real quick. You've already looked at them one time. You've already laughed under your breath. I know you did. But as you look at somebody today, I want you to understand something. They're in the image of God. You say, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Look at it in verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. When we look at God's creation, we understand that there's something that happened. Man is created, everything in this world. Here's what God said. God said, let there be light, and there was light. What did God do? He said it. He spoke it. God spoke it here in verse number 26 about man. He said, we are going to make man in our own image. Everything he has spoken into existence, into this world, until we have man. There's something amazing that God did for man. And, and looking at what God uh, said, this word, uh, image, it means an illustrate, uh, illustration. It means to resemble. It means to a uh, figure. It is just like him. God said, we're going to make man that is like us. Who is the us? Father, Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We've looked at that, and we understand. He said, let us make man in our own image. So I want to ask you something. What does God look like? What does God look like? Us. He said, let us make man in our own image. And so God himself said, I want you to know how in, on earth, how when you look at somewhere, you, you look at someone, they have been created in the image of God. When we look at his word, the image of God is seen, is seen as Jesus walked upon this earth. They did not question one time, any religion does not question, even that Jesus himself was a man. What did he look like? A man. He looked like us. He is created. And I want to tell you, was Jesus there in the creation? Yes. And so we understand what God did. How God said, us, let us make man in our image. And so how that physical image, it gives us a bodily form. And it looks like this. So you have been created. God created us in his own image. I love what he says. This image, he said, is followed by the likeness of God. So what is God like? Does God have emotions? I'm asking you all a question. Does God have emotions? Does God have feelings? It's God himself. So we're watching. He said, I want you to make man in our own image. And so how we see God doing, how there's that place where you see God. He, is, he has devotion in his life. Did you know that God himself even has hatred? He said, there's things that I hate. He said, there's things that are abomination." Do you know there's things that make God glad? He said it like this. Hey, in, the, in the word of God, he said, I rejoice. I sing over my children. He, we make him glad if you're a child of God. But there's also those things where he said it makes him sick to his stomach and he would spew it out in Revelation chapter number 2. 
So we're watching God. He said, we are made in his image. In, in chapter number 2 and verse number 7, we watch that. I want you to look at it. Genesis 2 and verse number 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So what are we made out of? Dust. He said, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. I mean, this morning you're breathing. Would you say Amen. God breathed into us. And man became a living body? No, he said man became a living soul. Did you know we're living in a time when cloning is happening? Did you know they have been cloning cows and USDA puts a stamp of approval on it and says it is okay? Did you know we are doing cloning of all kind of things in our world today? But I want to give you something. They may have better clone a body, but you cannot make it live. It does not have a soul. I want to, can I, can I be, let me, can I drop, can I drop something in on y'all? Can y'all hear me real good? Amen. How many of you ever watched the Twilight Zone growing up? I don't know if it's still on or not, but did they not have some crazy stuff on there? I remember when I was growing up, I was watching the Twilight Zone one night, and I seen a man and woman go up to a drink machine. Y'all know what a drink machine is? Somebody. Amen. You put the money in, you mash the button, and a drink comes out. It's like, wow. They did that for babies. That's where babies were made. We're in a drink machine, and they would, they would go in there and just boy or girl, and they'd push the button, and here come a boy or girl, and they walk out. I thought, man, they did all kind of crazy things on the twilight zone but i want to let y'all know something we're living in the twilight zone all kind of things are happening in our world in general there's so many science advances that is totally unbelievable what is happening in our world but you still can't give someone a soul There's a problem with the theory of evolution. By the way, anytime they say it's a theory, it lets you know that it might not be real. Amen? It's like driving a Ford. You might not get there. May this not happen. When you look at this theory of evolution, here's something that was never explained. They never could explain where a conscience came from. How do you get a soul in matter of mud or of, or of algae? And how do you make it become that one that cares for others? That does not just happen. When you watch life, there is something that has happened. And I want to tell you what happened. God breathed life into us. Genesis 2 and verse number 21 down through verse number 25, the greatest love story that has ever happened when God tells Adam, I'm going to make you a helpmate. Adam said, I don't even know what you're talking about. I like elephants. He said, I'm going to make you a woman. And he caused a deep sleep to go on Adam. The Bible says that God took a what from Adam? A rib. And he made a woman. Then God walked her over to Adam and presented her to Adam as the greatest gift of everything. Can I be honest with y'all? I do not read anywhere else in the scripture that Adam ever cared about an animal again. He didn't name another thing. He just like, it, it was all said and done. Amen. And so you watch as God had given him a life and God formed a woman from the man. We are created, the Bible says in verse number 27 of chapter 1, we are created by him. You are created in the image of God. Then the Bible says he gave instruction. Uh, he installed some things in us. In verse uh, number 26, he said, look at it with me. In chapter 1 and verse number 26, the Bible said that God gave them and, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. I have tried that. Y'all ever tried to command them things to get on your hook? Adam messed everything up when he sinned. Amen. 
He said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. He said, in verse number 26, he said, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over every, uh, over all the earth, and over every creeping uh, thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God said, in the beginning, uh, you're made in my image, and now you have dominion. You have power. You have authority. Uh, you're, you are the one who is going to lead our world. I've installed that in you. My, I have a cousin by the name of uh, Gary Shu. He's a preacher up in, uh, up in Blowing Rock and lives uh, here in Lenore. And uh, Brother Gary is known for breaking mules. And he would uh, take an old stubborn mule. Y'all know mules are stubborn, don't you? Amen. He would take an old mule uh, that nobody could do anything with. And next thing you know, man, that thing is walking down the road, pulling a carriage uh, with, with somebody in it. I mean, he would, he would take those things and break them down. Noah, or Noah didn't have to do that either, amen? But Adam never had to do that. There was no sinful, rebellious nature upon the earth. You got to remember how what is happening in this garden of Eden, in this place of pure paradise where they are. God had installed it into a man to have dominion over everything on this earth. And then the Bible lets us know as you go on in verse number 28, look at it with me. God gave them instructions. He created us. He gave us uh, that place to know that we're made in his image uh, and that we have feelings. We, we are people uh, we're created by God. Uh, we have been installed. Installed in us is that opportunity to lead and to care uh, for others. But in verse number 28, and God blessed them. What did he do? He blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. I want to ask you a question. Can y'all hear me real good? Do we have dominion over everything that creeps upon the earth? God said, I'm giving this to you. I'm giving you an instruction. How many of you ever had an instruction for something? Amen? God said, I'm giving you an instruction, and here is your instruction. He said, God bless them. I want to tell you something. You are not, I've said this over and over, I'm going to say it again, you're not an accident. You're not a byproduct of something that happened. You're not a mistake that took place one day or one night, and here you are. God gave you life on purpose so he could bless you and so he could fill your life. And so the Bible said he blessed them, and then he instructed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue the earth. That word subdue lets us know something. That word subdue lets us know that there's going to be challenges they're going to face. That word subdue means to tread down. It means to disregard. It means to conquer over something. It means to bring that something into subjection into your life. And so he said you have dominion over it. God gave him clear instructions. There's never been a greater environment than the Garden of Eden. There's never been a place more pure on this earth than the Garden of Eden. It was a place where God came down every single day and walked with Adam and with Eve. It is a place where God had given to come and commune with man. He's created. Then guess what happened? He got contaminated. Something is wrong. With our world today. It did not happen in 2020. It did not happen in 2019. It did not happen in every year you can account to. It, it, it happened all the way back at a garden. You don't know what's wrong with our racial issue? In this world that they are bringing up in our media so much. There's a problem. We're contaminated. It's not a problem of a color of skin. It's a problem of the darkness and the sinfulness of the heart of man. And so we're watching and we're understanding how that man, oh man, a man had it made in the garden. Now there's a contamination 
I want you to understand something. God gave, I want you to turn to Genesis 3 and verse number 6. Look at it with me. Genesis 3 and verse number 6. There's Adam and Eve. How many people's on earth? Adam and Eve, two people. The Bible said, and when uh, the woman saw that the tree uh, was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes. What's it pleasant to? The eyes. I want to tell you right now, that is how our world lives. We live in what is pleasing to the eyes. That is what is happening with Eve. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband, and he did what? He eat. Was it an apple that they ate? We have absolutely no idea. I'd say it's probably persimmons. Whatever it is contaminated everything. The person beside of you is contaminated. The person you're looking at is contaminated. Go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number verse and look at verse number 16 in Genesis chapter number 2. Let's see what God said to Adam. God, God's giving instruction to Adam. Look in Genesis 2 and verse number 16. So God did not leave them out by themselves and just hoping they're going to get it all. Look in verse number 16. And the Lord commanded the man. Who did he command? The man saying, of, a, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. He said, you can have it all. But in verse number 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And what God said in verse number 28, he said, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish the earth and subdue it. That means there's going to be times that things are going to come in your life and there's going to be temptations that are going to happen. You have to subdue in your life, not succumb to, not to follow, but you have to subdue them. There's a command that came from God. He said, don't eat of the tree of the, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. God, who walked with Adam every single day, commanded him, hey, listen, you can have it all. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to replenish the earth. I want you to multiply. I want you to be the one who, who has everything going in the right direction. And he said, and subdue it. Did you know this morning, regardless of what our world is saying, every sin has a penalty. The Bible says it like this, as you look at the word in 1 Corinthians 10, or 1 Chronicles 10 and verse number 13. So Saul died for his transgression. What did God say? If you eat of this tree, you're going to do what? Die. And so here we understand that God, I give him what is exactly said in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23. For he says, the, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He said, I want to let you know there's a command. That command is, you can do everything, don't eat of this tree. Why would God do that? Because everything that's happening with Adam and Eve in this garden is eternal. It is blessed. It is God's hand upon it. And he said, look, I don't want you to know of that good and evil. I don't want you to know how that there's sin how that can happen in your heart. Uh, listen, there's not any disco uh, dance halls there. There's not any bars to pass by in, the, in, in this Garden of Eden uh, where they're tempted. Uh, they're not walking by the alcohol section uh, in a grocery store uh, and being tempted by it. Uh, they're in a place where God said, I want you to know it is not those things. It is the sin uh, that is in your heart and can be in your heart by following after the lust of your flesh. So guess what happened in this, con in this place of being contaminated? There's a conversation that happens. Verse number one of chapter three, there's somebody been hanging out in the garden. I'm not sure where Adam is. Adam may have been commanding the fish to come to the top. Adam could have been doing anything. We watch. But it's Eve listening 
to a conversation. I want to ask y'all something. Can y'all hear me real good? If you can hear me, say praise the Lord. Would you like to sit down and have a conversation with Satan? Would you say, there's an invitation comes, there's a text message comes out of your phone that said, I just want to let you know, Satan wants to sit down with you tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., and he wants to talk to you. How many of you are going to answer that and say, yes, I'm coming, I want to talk to him? None that's got any sense or in their right mind or are not Satan worshipers. They are real. And we watch and we see something that is happening. So why in the world have a conversation with the enemy? I can tell you why. Y'all want to know why? Because she had no idea he was the enemy. Satan never presents himself as Satan. Satan never presents himself as he is going to bring destruction to your life. Satan never looked at Samson and said, I just want to let you know something, big boy. This is what you're going to do and this is what is going to happen. He just led him little by little until his whole life was destroyed. Satan comes, the Bible says, as an angel of light. So he is appearing unto Eve in this garden. This conversation was the beginning of contamination. You say, how in the world does she know? What, was, what, what should have been her place of cutting it out? Do you know that y'all, y'all do know something, don't you? We can say no to Satan. Did you know you can say no to sin? Did you know you can say no to, to, uh, to temptation? And here she is. She is being uh, tempted uh, by, by, by this serpent, the Bible says, uh, this one that she is not worried about, she is not afraid of, uh, but she hears what he says uh, when he says, oh, yeah, I know, but really, hath God said, did God really mean what he said? Did God really mean that this is going to happen to you if you do that. That is the place of unhooking from any conversation. When Satan tries to get you to go against what God has said. When you take your life and you say, wow, you know something, I think that it'd be okay if I just, if I had sex outside of marriage because I loved him so much and God said, don't do it. That is the place that you cut off that conversation. Amen. Can I let you a little, y'all in on a little something? Y'all know what old Joseph did in the book of Genesis when he was tempted? The Bible says that the woman ripped his coat off of him as he was running out the door. Get out of that situation. Amen? You say, I have to walk home. It's a whole lot better to walk home than it is to have a, a heart that is contaminated and a life that is destroyed. Oh, you're watching as God, Adam and Eve, and here's Eve. She's all these things are going through her mind. All she has to do is just say, no, I know what God said. But when he began to question what God said in this conversation, it was a place she could subdue it. Y'all remember something? God said to Adam and Eve, you have power and dominion over every single thing upon the earth. Was this serpent upon earth? Was this serpent on earth? It is in a tree. It is, it is in that place of, of she had dominion and power over her decision how to follow after this serpent's command. Wow. The Bible says... And you look on down in verse number 6 and verse number 7 that we read that something happened to them. Now they are condemned. They just ate of the fruit. What's the one thing out of the entire garden garden that God said not to do? They ate of the fruit. You say, well, I'll tell you what, preacher, if that had been me, I wouldn't have done it. Can I just let y'all in on something? We would have brought whipped cream. Our nature in our world after this part, after Adam and Eve have sinned against God, is we naturally sin. It is our nature to sin. It should never be our excuse for sinning. 
The Bible says in these words that they did eat. So here they are. They're in that place of condemnation. They stepped across the line. It's kind of like smoking a cigarette for the first time. How many of you remember that? Would you raise your hand if you smoked a cigarette one time? The rest of you ain't going to admit it. You went, <laughs> and you told all your friends, man, that's great. How many of you remember that? Your lungs automatically told you, get it out. Then you thought, well, it wasn't too bad. You suffered through another one, you suffered through another one, and now you pay $48 to get one. Amen? You know what is happening when you step across those lines? You lay aside guilt. You cover guilt over with a cap off of a bottle of Budweiser. We, we cover those things over when we're walking in a condemned heart. You say, well, it don't bother me anymore. It's not a condemning in my life. That should be an automatic mark in my soul that something is not right. When I can go against what God said. They went against what God said. And the very first thing that happens in their life is they go and they hide. The Bible says, look in verse number 7. The Bible, chapter number 3, the Bible says, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Nothing had been wrong with them before this time. Their eyes are open to something that has never been before. And they sewed fig leaves together and made their, uh, themselves aprons. You say, what in the world? I want to let you know what in the world. When you sin against God, you automatically try to hide it. There's something that tries to justify my sinfulness when I have sinned. When I take what God has said, and I know what God has said, and we can, we can say it as we're trying to be politically uh, correct. We can say it's all in the name of tolerance. We can do all these things to try to cover up why we are doing what we are doing. But the main thing is they had sinned against God. And because of that sin, you and I, all of us in this world, according to Romans chapter number 5, we are all born into sin with a sinful nature. We all have a sinful nature. And because we have a sinful nature, friend, we are living in condemnation. The Bible says it like this in, in the book of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. How many of you know that God so loved the world? Would you say amen? amen? Then when you go down the next verse, he said, I want to let you know something. I don't even have to condemn you because you have already condemned yourself. You are living in that condemnation. Therefore, you need to be rescued and redeemed and forgiven and saved from that condemnation. And I want to tell you, I don't know how you are, but I do know the day that I realized in verse number or chapter number 3 here that I realized for myself that I was a sinner just like Adam and Eve. I wanted to hide from God. I wanted to cover it up with rock music. I wanted to cover it up with my lifestyle. I wanted to cover it up by going to church but I want to tell you there's a savior who never lets you go when you are when he is speaking to you about your sin oh and we understand what is going on with Adam and Eve they're trying to cover it up I want to ask you something this morning what you covering up what are you covering up when God comes by God's been in this place this morning he was just walking through our hearts you have something that you're covering? Do you have something that is bringing that condemnation into our life? I want you to look in verse number 8 of chapter 3. As we look at man, you say, why in the world do people act like they do? It is all because of verse number 6 and verse number 7. But I want you to see the hand of God. Look in verse number 8. The Bible said, and they heard the voice of the Lord God doing what? Look at it. Get down and look at, your, look at your Bible. That's what we're here for. We got these Bibles. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God doing what? Walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Can I just let y'all in on something? They, they are not watching a voice walk. This is a person. This is Christ. This is Jesus who came and walked with them every single day. They, they knew him. They, they walked with him every day because he looked like a what? 
He looked like a man. He looked like them. He walked with them every single day. He is God walking in the garden. And the Bible said, And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Can you imagine trying to hide yourself behind a tree that God created? You ever thought about trying to hide in your life When you have sin, you're hiding behind the things that God has given you and blessed you with. You're hiding behind others. We're hiding behind religion. Sometimes we hide behind church. We come to church to make ourselves feel better. Friend, I want to tell you, if our heart is condemned and we've never trusted Jesus, how we cannot hide from him. Here's what David said. He said, if I go up into heaven, he's there. He said, if I ascend all the way down into hell, he said, he's there. If I go to the east or the west, he said, God is there. He is everywhere. And I want to tell you, he wants to make a covenant with you. And that's exactly what he did with Adam and with Eve. And we can read how the rest of this whole chapter, here's what did. God stepped in. What would have happened if God would not have stepped in? We have Adam and Eve who would have lived in that sinful state for all eternity. And I want to tell you, that is why God stepped in and God came, how calling them. God came, how to bring them out of that place of knowing him. How God came for the purpose to make a covenant with them. He came to them and said, who in the world told you was naked? Why are you hiding? And then Adam says, I did eat, but it was because of her. She said, I did eat. It was because of the serpent that you made. They confessed, I've sinned. Against you. Can I let you know something today, friend? The greatest place you and I can be is in that place where we see our heart honest before God. God, this is what I've done and this is where I am. You know what happened to man? God had to make a covenant. When we sung that song just a few minutes ago about him dying, that divine exchange... The Bible says in this verse of Scripture, it's the place where he condemned Satan and he let Satan know that, I, that there's victory in Jesus. Amen. He also let them know that you're going you're gonna, to uh, you're gonna work and you're going to labor by the sweat of your brow. Yeah, he said, I want to let you know the way you're going to make your life. There's going to be thorns. There's going to be things in life you're going to struggle with. He said, in childbirth, I just want to let you know, ladies, he, he, he said uh, that it is going to be painful. And you can thank uh, Eve and Adam uh, for sinning in the garden. He said, it becomes a curse of nature upon this life. Uh, you're going to struggle. There's things that are going to happen. It all happened from that one instance when they sinned. In their life against God. You say, boy, God, that must be very terrible how to put that kind of judgment up. No, that man was very sinful. When you and I have sinned, there's condemnation that is going to come upon our sin. And so that is what is happening. And the Bible says, here's what God did. God made them close from an animal. It's the first place we see that God made a covenant with man And he washed away, he cleansed away, and he covered up their sin. He gave them clothes from an animal that the blood was shed. You know what Jesus did on a cross? He took our place. The blood was shed so that you and I could be forgiven and be cleansed. Adam and Eve from that point on, yes, they had a sinful nature. But thank God for the forgiveness of God. Thank God for the day that God came out of where they were. I'm going to give you these right quickly. And I want you to understand something about that we are all called. How many of you remember doing this whenever you was growing up? How many of you had a can on a string that you talked to somebody on the other end? Y'all, some of y'all ain't never lived. Go home, get you some cans, put you a string on it, and string that thing through the house and talk to somebody on the other end without texting them. Amen? God's called us. There's not a person in this building, there's not a person in your car. There's not a person sitting on your in your living room or driving out wherever you may be that God has not called. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 5 is the scripture where God tells Jeremiah, he said, I just want you to know something. While you are yet in your, mother, in your mother's womb, I have called you. I have a call for your life. God created you and give you a call. That call is this. The Bible says in the book of Exodus. What book? Exodus. Uh, It's in Exodus we watch as God calls in Exodus chapter number uh, 3 and verse number 4. Moses was just doing his thing. What was Moses doing? 
his thing. He was being a shepherd on the backside of nowhere. And he was just going through life. He was doing his thing. And the Bible said all of a sudden this bush uh, catches on fire, but it's not burned. It was called a, a burning bush. It never burned. And God spoke to Moses from a burning bush. He called him and said, here's what I want you to do. The Bible says, Elijah this is found in the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 19, that Elijah is in a cave. He has run. He, is, he thinks his life is completely over. And the Bible says that here's what happens with Elijah. He said a storm comes. And man, surely God is in this storm. And trees are breaking everywhere. There's an earthquake. And Elijah just keeps sitting. He don't hear God. He said, well, God wasn't in that. All these things happen. Then the Bible says that while Elijah's sitting in this cave, the still, small voice. God just breaks through his darkness. He called him. He spoke to him. You know what we need? We need to hear the voice of God in our life. And the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number 4. That, they, that Jesus beside the sea calls out Peter, James, John, Simon. He calls, he calls them out to come. And follow him. He said, I want you to come follow me. I'll make you fishers of what? Man, he said, I'm going to change your life. If you'll come follow me, I'll give you life. What life is really about. You're a sinner, just like Adam and Eve. But if you'll follow me, you can be saved. You can be forgiven. And you can watch your life be changed forever. There's a call that comes from God in all of our lives. It's up to me and you to answer. I want to ask you, have you answered his call? Have you answered him calling you to come follow him? I want to tell you that condemnation, that sin you're living in, everything that is happening in your life, if you without Jesus continue on in life, you're going to go to hell. Jesus never meant for one person to go to hell. He created you to glorify God and to have life with God. The Bible says you have a cause. 1 Samuel chapter number 17 and verse number 29. David looks at all these that have been sitting still doing nothing. And he said, is there not a cause? He said, man, God, God, God has given me life. He saved me. He's anointed me. And now I have a cause in my life. I want to ask you something. Have you picked up God's cause for your life? Or are you just trying to make it through life? That cause of what God has given us as a purpose. Here's what the Bible says. This is Ephesians 2 and verse number 10. He said, for we are, create, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That is so that we can glorify and honor God, not so that we can be saved. You have a purpose to glorify God in our life. He said, we have a plan in our life. That's Proverbs uh, chapter 3 and verse uh, number 5 and 6. He said, uh, for us to lean not unto our own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Uh, God, here I am. I give myself to your plan and to your purpose. I want to tell you something that's amazing to me about being born again and knowing Jesus. About man, old man, us that are broken. Just like was Dan said just a few minutes ago, I'm sinful and I'm undeserving of anything. The Bible says this in the book of 2 Timothy. It's the apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verse number 6 down to verse number 8. Paul said, I'm now ready to be offered up. He said, my time of my departure is at hand. He said, I want to tell you, there's a prize laid up for me, the crown of life, the crown of rejoicing, the crown uh, to go before Jesus. I'm going to him. You got a prize today. You're going to heaven one day if you're born again. Amen. If you know Jesus, man, oh man, that sinful man with a sinful nature that does sinful things, that is wicked and ungodly and condemned uh, without Christ, that should be uh, in hell and should be to the lake of fire and should go to the tribulation and have to suffer all these things on this earth and then uh, to an eternity without God. He said, I want to let you know in your life you can be saved and forgiven. And the prize is going to a place called heaven. Oh, what a day. That is going to be. I want us to stand together this morning. I want you personally this morning in your life. I want you to access where I am. Where am I, God, in my life? What is going on in my life right now? Am I this man like Adam who is fighting against all these things and trying to subdue them? Or am I being fruitful, multiplying? 
Am I replenishing in life like God said? Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I living my cause and my purpose? I want to tell you the foundation is to understand that your friend, your family member, those around us, they can't do different without Jesus. That person you have in your life that is a Christian you're praying for, that God will bring them to that place in their life of trusting Christ as Savior and Lord. They're under addiction. They've got all these things. I want to tell you, they cannot change themselves. That's why you and I, God has saved us and helped us to realize that as a sinner, God, I'm, I want to pray for them. Listen, you may have somebody this morning that you just need to come and realize Man, I've tried to direct them. I've tried to help them. I can't change them, but God, you can. Listen, I would come. To, you may want to come this morning and say, God, I want to come pray for that person. God, I realize where they are. I realize their sin is keeping them from knowing Jesus. And God, today, I ask you to break the bondage that is around them by the blood and the power of Jesus. Everything we lost in Adam and Eve, everything that they lost at the garden when they sinned, all in Jesus, glory to God. When he saves us, he returns to us. Power over Satan. Power over sin. Power over the grave. There's victory this morning. So I need to say to come. Pray for this person. Listen, I want to ask you to call them this morning. Pray for them that God would set them free. Maybe they're struggling this morning. Listen, I want to tell you, don't wait until they die to say, God, I wish I'd have prayed for them more. Hey, it'd be a great time to come. God, I want to trust you to work in their life. Just say this morning, Pastor, in my life, I've let things subdue me. I've let things take my life. I've let things pull apart and pull away those things from me. And I know I should be given God to. Hey, listen, would you come and say, God, I want you to restore me. Adam and Eve, they're in that place. They stood out. They came out from behind that tree and said, God, we've been, we've been hiding. Hey, there's a place in our life where we say, God, we've just been hiding. We've been playing games with you, God. We've been playing games with your word. We've been playing games. God, I'm just, I'm just doing it out of convenience. If it's convenient for me to be at church, I'll be there. If it's convenient for me to serve God, if it's convenient for me to witness, God, I, I want to tell you, maybe sin this morning you're dealing with. Maybe some things in your life that you are dealing with in your heart. You say, God, I just need to come, Lord. I want you to forgive me and cleanse me. So this morning, Pastor... I'm, I'm the man, old man. I'm just like Adam and just like Eve. I know I'm still living in that place of sin. I'm trying to hide it from God. And I want to tell you, friend, God's not worried about your sin. He's worried about your soul. Jesus died for our sin on a cross so that we can give our soul to God and have him to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give us a brand new heart and a brand new life. You say this morning, Pastor, I need to come. I need Jesus in my life this morning. Listen, would you come? I need to ask him to forgive me and save me. I need to ask Jesus to give me life. Listen, would you be honest with God? Lord, I want to give my life to you. God, I want you to save me. I want you to forgive me this morning. I want you to bring life to me this morning, God. Hey, I want to tell you, God knows where you are. He knows what, he knows what you're going through. He knows the struggle you're having right now with sin. You say, Pastor, I need to come today. Listen, let God save you. Let God forgive you. Here's what he said. He said that if we believe that Jesus died on a cross, that he was buried and that he rose again, he said, I want you to know if you'll come to me, I will in no wise cast you out. You say, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how bad my sin is and how condemned I am. Hey, I do know because I have been there in that same place of being un, of being condemned under the hand of God because of my sinfulness. But Jesus said, come to me. I will forgive you of every sin. You say this morning, Pastor, I need God to forgive me. Listen, would you come right now? Listen, you say, Pastor, I need to come. I need God to save and forgive me. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, He will. Glory to God. Glory to God. You say, I need to come this morning. Oh, what a Savior. Hallelujah. God is so good. God, I bless your name, Jesus. You say, this morning, I need you, Father. You say, Pastor, this morning, I need Jesus in my life. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? Just slip your hand up. We want to help you. I need Jesus in my life. I'm not ever trusting him. Lord of God. You said this morning, Pastor, in my life, I'm struggling with some sin in my life. I need God to help me. Listen, I want to tell you the greatest place you and I can be is in that place. I'm knowing we need help. I need God to help me with some sin I'm struggling with. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm struggling with some things in my life. God bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to God. You said this morning, Pastor, I've got somebody in my life today that don't know the Lord. Help me pray for them. Would you just slip your hand up? I know some people in my life. Well, God to rescue them. Oh, he's able. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. 
God, we praise you this morning for your word. God, thank you for letting us see what happened to man. God, why we are where we are. Father, we need you more than we've ever needed you. God, we need your breath upon us, God, to breathe life into us. All oh, God is your people. Father, I want to pray, God, with these that have never trusted you as Savior and Lord. God, that even right now, God, they'll commit their life to you. Lord Jesus, I recognize, I recognize I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. Please forgive me of my sin. Come in my life, Lord. I give you my life. I give you my sin, Lord. I give you who I am. I believe that you died for me on a cross. You were buried and you rose again. And today, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me and save me. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Father, I pray, God, with these this morning that are struggling with sin. God, you tell us in your word, God, that if we'll confess our sin, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, just like you did Adam and Eve when they came out and said, I did eat, God. I praise you, God, that if we confess it, you'll forgive it, Lord, and you'll restore us through it. Father, we want to pray, God, for our friends and family. God, that in, in our as we're looking at your word and understanding our foundation, God, that we understand man. God, we understand why they are like they are. It's not because of the addiction they have. God, it's not because of the things that are holding them bondage that we see. God, it's because they need a heart that's changed by the blood of Jesus and made free, made clean forevermore. God, we want to give you praise. God, we just want to give you glory this morning. God, I want to give you thanksgiving, Lord, that you are in control. Father, we ask you to bless every single need in this building. God, we commit to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you glad he came to rescue us one day? Amen. I'm glad we have a Savior uh, this morning that is our, our uh, alive. He is well. He is here for one purpose. That's to bring us to know Him and to worship Him. I want to thank God for His blessings. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. That's Brother Mark. He's going to come uh, dismiss us in a word of prayer. Uh, I want to tell all of you I love you in the Lord. Invite somebody to come. There's some invite cards uh, just like this out on the uh, uh, out in the resource center. Pick up some of those. Hand them out this week. Invite people to the house of the Lord because everybody needs to. Everybody needs Jesus. Amen. And uh, so invite somebody to come. I love you in the Lord. Thank you for being in God's house. If you are uh, planning to attend uh, the new member uh, class, uh, we're going to have it right after service here up in our office building. So thank you so much. I love you in the Lord. Amen. I'm going to uh, let you know what we're doing with the 5K. Uh, Angie's going to be at the very back back there. We've got a 5K uh, banner up. It's, it's real hard to miss. It's orange. It sticks out pretty good, so it's hard to miss. But uh, we want you to, we want everybody in the church to have a, uh, a 5K T-shirt. We are 19 days away uh, from that. That is $10 a piece. But we want to flood. We want everybody to have one of those. Uh, they're going to be a, a, a blue this year. I'm colorblind. Don't ask me what color. All I know is it's a, it's a light blue. Uh, so they're going to be real pretty. Uh, so uh, if you want a 5K t-shirt, if you'll go back there, Angie will help you out with that. And then also sponsorships. If you will see uh, a teenager, uh, youth, they will help you out with that and fix you out. If you're ready, if you want to walk, run, crawl, uh, be pulled or pushed in the 5K, uh, you can sign up back there. We have, uh, we have those uh, applications are back there for that, for you to fill that out, okay? But I appreciate you. We're going to pray, ask the Lord to help, and uh, ask God's will to be done. Do want to make mention again, uh, get, it, get it in your heart and uh, get it on your mind. Uh, starting on the 2nd of May, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, the youth was going to move their Bible study. And Brother Bill was going to do it, and I think they said one more was going to do it at 9 o'clock uh, starting on the 2nd. So you come early, then we'll at uh, 9.45 we'll start making our way over here uh, to the worship service. But I hope you have a great day. Let's pray. Ask God's will to be done. Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that we can trust you and look to you. God, for everything. I'm glad that you come looking for us. I'm glad that you didn't leave us alone in our sinful state. Father, I'm glad for the forgiveness, the blood you shed upon Calvary. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just speak to hearts and speak to lives. God, that you would redeem them. God, that they would not be able to get away from you. Lord, it does not matter the how bad it is or how bad we think it is. God, your grace is sufficient for every need. I pray, God, God, that you would touch every individual, every family. God, I pray that you would manifest your grace. We love you. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray your will be done in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.